Hey everybody, it's Mary Z back once again for Voice Hacks. I wanted today to cover one of your most requested videos, which is on the vocalist Tatiana of Ginger. Today we are gonna cover how to do vocals like Ginger. You guys have been asking for this video. Ginger has been reacted to by vocal coaches and singers and everyone to death on YouTube. So we're getting a lot of weird faces and reactions. <sighs> what? That's gonna ruin your voice. Ew, I don't really think you should do that. <sighs> I don't even know what's going on here. And as you all know, I'm dedicated here on the Voice Hacks channel to breaking it all down and giving you the how and the why. Will doing harsh vocals like Tatiana from Ginger really mess up your voice? And what's she doing to begin with? We're gonna break it all down in today's tutorial. So the video we are gonna take a look at today is for the song Pisces. And it's because that's the one that's been reacted to the most and that we're hearing, seeing a lot of classical and traditional vocal coaches just turn their nose up at and make their faces at. Doing the harsh vocals that we're gonna hear does not hurt your voice. And we're gonna talk about how and why, what kind of harsh vocals they are, and why doesn't it actually hurt our vocal folds to do this. This also will explain how this vocalist can sing and scream relatively seamlessly, transitioning from one to the other without becoming hoarse ever, and being able to do this over and over repeatedly, night after night, set after set, year after year. So let's take a look at the things that make Tatiana from Ginger a great vocalist and we'll teach you how to do some of them. So the first thing that we look at is not very extreme. It's some really nice, lovely, and very well done clean singing. So if you wanted to replicate the clean singing part of what Tatiana does, I would focus on your belting, uh, your smoothness of tone, your pitch control. This is not a mixed voice. This is kind of a quiet belt, but it is not a mixed voice. By and large, she belts. And also what we have is an impeccable sense of rhythm. Ginger is a really progressive and jazzy band. So as a clean or a harsh vocalist, if you don't have the rhythm skills, you're gonna sound really off. You can't just be random in progressive bands. The weird time signatures and the unique melodies are intentional. So you need to nail the rhythms. And that's one thing that she really does. So pitch and rhythm in your clean singing are paramount. But the one thing that everybody wants to know about is the harsh vocals. So let's listen to the screams and let's find out what's going on there. And let's talk about what we can do to make the same sounds. Okay, so this is the part where if I was an opera coach, I would start making faces, tell you how it's gonna ruin your voice, even though a lot of traditional vocal coaches can't tell you what's going on here. And it's not their fault. Most people have been told throughout their lives, particularly if they have traditional training, that these type of phonations and this type of distortion will in fact destroy your voice, ruin your hopes at any other career, but the real truth is that our vocal cords are really, really delicate. If that were the case, 
She wouldn't even be able to finish this song, let alone set after set on tour and all of the other things that we've seen evident live. And we've seen this not only with Tatiana, but with other metal vocalists as well. This sound is what we call the false chord scream. Yes, it is spelled C-O-R-D. C-H-O-R-D is a grouping of notes. It is not called the false C-H-O-R-D scream. It's the false chord scream because basically all that's happening in this crazy expansive sound is blowing air through our trachea and past a lot of our tissues called the vestibular folds or known as the false chords more commonly. And we can also flap around in addition to the tissues in here around our false cords, other tissues throughout our mouth cavity, past our soft palate and our uvula. And flapping those tissues, as far as we know, as far as most of the research that's been done shows us, doesn't seem to have a negative effect on our actual vocal folds. The things that actually affect our vocal cords negatively are slamming them together. The weird thing is that in a false chord scream, they're actually sitting apart and they're not touching really at all. And this creates an environment that's quite safe. And as long as we're actually making a correct false chord scream with our vocal folds open, there's nothing about flapping our false folds or these other tissues and making this crazy noise that's actually going to create hoarseness or cause problems. I'm also a living example of this. I've been doing false chord screams for very many years I've never had a nodule or a polyp or a serious vocal issue as far as screams damaging my voice. What we have to realize is that they're really harsh vocals. They're not actual screaming. And so screaming implies using your vocal cords. So even though we casually call all this stuff metal screaming, it's actually not screaming with your actual voice. So these people can do this night after night and have a really deep sound. The false chord scream is also sometimes called growls or growling. Let's take a look at this actually happening. In San Francisco, there was a doctor who was kind enough to provide us with some research where we actually get to observe this phenomenon happening. And we can look at this clip right here on YouTube. Dr. Krzysztof Izdebski of the Pacific Voice and Speech Foundation took video and slowed down the movement of these folds during metal vocal phonation. And if we take a look at the footage here, we can see that all these tissues are really, really flapping around in the windpipe. The white part there is our vocal cords and they're sort of sitting open. And we're looking at the trachea up here near the neck and we're seeing all these folds sort of flap around. And that is what's creating the white noise in our distortion. And this is why the voice is so shocking to the people listening to her, because we see a small woman and we think that this large phonation doesn't really match what we're seeing. However, all people can make this phonation and it's very deep and round when our vocal cords are open, even if it's coming out of a smaller person or a smaller instrument, if you will. So this is what's happening here. If you want to do vocals like Ginger, you have to learn the false chord scream. I do not recommend just trying it out of nowhere. There is a method to kind of getting your voice out of the sound and to making the noise pure and correctly. So I would try to look at my Screamer series playlist here on the Voice Hacks channel and watch some of the tutorials about how to false chord scream and see if you can kind of slowly get the ball rolling. Otherwise, there are good coaches around, including myself. You can always email me at voicehacks at gmail.com if you want some lessons on how to improve or even start learning your harsh vocals. Thanks everybody for requesting Ginger. Tatiana is an amazingly talented vocalist and hopefully all the bands we love will get on the road soon and we'll get to hear these screams live once again. Now you know how the screams are made, what they're doing, and why they don't hurt your voice. Thanks everybody, I'll see you soon in another tutorial here on the Voice Hacks channel.